blessings to all of you. Everything around us reminds us that Advent is here. The days are shorter. The boxes of decorations have come down from the attic. The stores are blinking with lights and music is playing, reminding us that it's beginning to sound a lot like Christmas. We need the festive and hopeful tones, the feel-good movies, and yes, even the cookies. If we're honest, it has been a foggy, gloomy kind of year. Yet even if we must escape into the folly and hollow, let us pray with our church this season. Let us make space for the sacredness of the season. We need that as well. Each Sunday of Advent, we light a candle. Let us cherish this simple, calming practice as our way to take notice of the reason for the season. May we light each candle of Advent with the intention of adding our light to the darkness and uncertainty that surround us, with the willingness to do our part to bring about God's reign in our world. Today's readings, like our Advent candles, invite us into a sacred time. First, they heed us to take notice. Then they encourage us to stay awake. And finally, they advise us to be prepared. Three movements, notice, awake, prepare. So let's begin with noticing. The scripture today heats us to take notice of the times we live through. We find mentions of war, darkness, and even the great flood. Before we escape into the Christmas movies with happy endings or the lights around the house, we are compelled to notice our time. The great flood Jesus alludes to in the gospel today should serve as a warning. Remember Noah building the ark, telling people it was going to rain, gathering the animals? We too have Noahs, prophets around us, folk who care for our common home, telling us to do something about our carbon footprint, to work for climate justice, to live with what we need, and to advocate for clean energy. How many floods have we witnessed already? Remember Germany or the devastating floods in Pakistan? Terrible, the worst in history. Or even closer to home, the aftermath of Hurricane Ian in Puerto Rico and Florida. We hear Jesus' words as we ponder with those images. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. So will it be also at the coming of the Son of Man. And there is so much to notice. What about the violence around us? The violence that has taken the lives of school children, like Uvalde, or college kids recently at the University of Virginia. The violence that makes a home unsafe for a woman. The violence that has destroyed countries around our world, from Tigray to Ukraine to Nicaragua. How can we hear the prophet Isaiah without remembering the millions of people displaced by violence around the world. The prophet says, they shall beat their swords into plowshares. One nation shall not rise the sword against the other, raise the sword against the other, nor shall they train for war again. We light a candle to remember to notice, to remember to bring light into this darkness that surrounds us, to be able to pray with the psalm, because of my brothers and sisters and friends, I will say, peace be with you, shalom. Because of the house of the Lord, I will pray for your good, 
says the song. May our lights this season be a blessing of shalom, of the peace our community needs. Then we challenge to stay awake. Paul writes to the Romans that it is the hour now for you to awake from sleep. But this is not just a gentle wake-up call. Jesus is emphatic. The gospel reading has an exclamation mark. It is not simply stay awake, but a command, stay awake. We use exclamations too loosely, but we find them in the gospel. But when we find them in the gospel, we must pay attention. Jesus is ordering his followers to stay awake, for you do not know on which day our Lord will come. The times we live in make it easier for us to understand this you do not know on which day. As we review the pandemic years, we had no idea who would die from COVID and who wouldn't. We are saddened by the stories of the family grieving the loss of a loved one who simply went out for a walk or was getting ready for a parade. For sure, Jesus' words, you do not know on which day, ring more true around us. But what do you do? How do you stay awake? What does it mean to stay awake? Beyond the caffeine, or armoring our life and house to prepare for the thieves the gospel warns about. I believe that staying awake is a spiritual practice. Words like conscious, alert, alive come to mind when we try to understand what awake means. This Advent season, we are called to move beyond noticing what goes on around we also need to pray for a conversion of heart, to kindle our soul's light, to hope, to trust, and to believe, so we can genuinely throw off the works of darkness. The silence of those who stay awake through the night, of those who stand in vigil, is a good practice. We need to keep our souls awake, alive, and aware. And finally, we need to be prepared. The Christian life is an active life, a movement, a constant process. Today's readings have many actions. Isaiah has nations streaming toward the highest mountain. The prophet heeds us to climb to the Lord's mountain, to walk his path. The psalm responds to the first reading with more movement. We will go up to the house of the Lord. We have set foot. Paul's letter to the Romans has its call to action, put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day. Conduct ourselves properly. This Advent season, we have some doing to do and some moving to do. Isaiah and Paul help us understand Jesus when he says, you must also be prepared. Preparing the way, it's not just decorating, reading, or meditating, though all those practices are graced reminders of the season we begin. Preparing the way is moving walking in Jesus' paths, and finding those he blessed, healed, and accompanied. We need to ask ourselves, are there persons in our community who could use a visit this time of the year, when sadness and loss weigh more heavily in our heart? Couldn't we spare a warm sweater or a jacket? for the houseless brothers or sisters in our community? What about volunteering someplace? Whom do I need to forgive? What donation do I need to make? Should I prepare meals for those who are going home? 
How do we reach out to listen, accompany, and bless? What action that lights the world, that broadens my generosity, will show that I have put on the armor of light this season? You must also be prepared, Jesus tells us today. May our first candle of Advent remind us to prepare our souls, our home, our communities to celebrate God's promise to be with us always. And yes, let us enjoy the Christmas movies and the joy of the season. God knows we need it. Have a blessed Advent season. Amen.